course, while you're in mugging attendance, if you have anything that you'd like to add to the agenda notes, open floor items, or if you have any PRs, bugs, or mailing list uh, discussions that deserve extra attention on the call, drop them in and we will work our way through. While everybody is logging attendance and getting things noted, um, do we have any new attendees on the call today who are new today or have not introduced themselves before who'd like to speak up? We'd love to chance to welcome you and uh, hear, hear what brought you in. Oh, so hi. Uh, oh. Should, should I go first? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Rithik. Um, I have been writing a lot of blogs around cloud native ecosystem and you can drop the links here in a second. And yeah, I'm from India and I'm in my third year of university. So I'm looking forward to continue to your work. And yeah, that is all about me. Great. It's, it's fantastic to have you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into agenda notes. Um, I think we had touched on the discussion a uh, time or two, but um, going into Google Summer of Code events, uh, it's gonna be really important to, of course, have good first issue labels on all um, relevant items in Git. So. Um, as you're going through, if you see anything that deserves that label or um, is worthy of discussion to determine whether or not that makes sense, um, definitely bring it up. And or initiative is always great. Also, long awaited dot five nine release is out with the 1.56 CDI release. So amazing to the whole team, all contributors. Big round of applause. And I don't even mean that ironically, that was some work. All right, so Kubert Summit, we have dates. I see some people clicking on the links already. Um, be sure and check out the event coming up the end of March. So that's not very far away. I'm sure it will be here way sooner than any of us feel like it will be. Um, it is a digital event. So I hope to see all of you and more there. Um, and then of course the schedule, if there are any questions, about scheduling or how the event works, um, feel free to bring those up either um, in the community meetings leading up to the event or in Slack. If we, uh, if something's not clear to anyone or to, to, to you, then there's a good chance that other people are wondering the same thing. So don't be shy about speaking up and asking questions. And then let's see. Of course, an invite to Cooper Kube, community at KubeCon Amsterdam. Um, Andrew Burden is back from PTO. So we will look forward to his company in upcoming community meetings again, um, but he was away and couldn't join us today. But we should see him next week. Um, definitely, he welcomes messages from everyone um, in Slack or by other means if you have them. Um, it's always fun to see the Kubert team and community circling up at conventions. All right, it looks like we have an open floor item um, from Anonymous on live CPU and memory resize. Does anyone want to talk about that? 
Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry for quality, I'm driving too far. <laughs> no I just want to yeah, yeah, I just wanted to announce that I prepared a proposal for life memory and CPU resize. And I'm inviting everyone to commit their suggestions. That's it. Okay, is there um do, 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 is there something that I can link back to on the agenda if I go find it? Uh it is it is should it should be linked already. Uh oh um, it isn't. It's not. It is uh the last PR into community repository. In the community repository? Yeah. Um uh, I actually find out that this feature gets nerfed in Kubernetes 1.17. So hopefully in two releases, it will be possible to do life size for the support. And I think um, relying on this, so we can implement the life size for the repository. Sweet, I found the link. So I'll drop that in the agenda. Yeah. All right. Proposal, live resize, vCPU, and memory. So looks like vertical scaling PR was merged. There's a design and implementation item. Yeah, one more thing that in zero point uh, 59 release we disabled uh, memory ballooning device. And I think it should be enabled back to make it possible to like resize the virtual machine. Actually, the resizing can be done by buying uh, max memory and max C cores or especially press. Um, I know um, your audio isn't the, the greatest setup because you're in the car. Um, if you're able okay. to speak up, though, it helps. Okay, so everything is described in proposal. I hope the people who are interested in that are interested in that. Like, or maybe I can. And audio. Can you hear me better now? Yes, much clearer. Yeah, sure. So I just want to say a little bit more about implementation uh, that uh, first in the current release, we disabled memory ballooning device. And I think it should be enabled back because it is important for making life resizing work works. Um, as about implementation, it's just about two additional fields uh, to specify max memory limit and uh, max CPU cores or actually threads um, on which limit it can be resized. In this way, it will work, uh, I think, automatically. So we can add an additional procedure for, for life resizing the virtual machine uh, if those fields are specified. Yeah, I, everything is described in proposal. Yep. It looks well laid out. Hey, Andre. I believe we have Jet on call, who is actually, or will be, uh, looking at a CPU hot plug uh, shortly. So I think Jet can already maybe um, give you some feedback on that. Uh, generally, when I'm Looking at the proposal, I'm a little bit scared to review it because it does two things which seem similar, but in, in my opinion, they are uh, at the same time very different. 
Mm -hmm. And maybe we could split the proposal to CPUs and memory. Um, yeah, we can do that. And you told that feature about uh, resizing of CPU already implemented? No, I think Jed is going to be looking at the feature. Uh -huh. um, there are a few methods how we can do that. And I found, especially about the me memory, uh, there are three different methods how we can do that. And I thinking that memory balloting device is simplest and uh, that's the way it will work on every uh, operating system, even Windows, because uh, they have support for, for this. Yeah, I think that is... Okay, please go ahead and comment it. And I think we can split it into two different proposals. Jet is just commenting that he's going to review it. Uh, I would just add that um, if you already did not mention it in your proposal, I would uh, mention what is the what is the uh, points for the memory balloning, and mm -hmm. what are what are the counts of the of the approach. Um, I think the main uh, main points will be the differences. Uh, what can be uh, supported by the features, right? So I think memory balloning doesn't support uh, NUMA uh, or some, one more thing, but uh, it, I don't remember right now. It's a good point. Uh, as far as I know, there's the second option is not using, uh, it's using virtual mem instead of memory ballooning, uh, and it does support NUMA. Yeah, exactly. So if you can just you know, write down these pros and cons, that would be much helpful. And, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we can add additional field to specify uh, what kind of device user wants to add memory ballooning or virtual memory. <laughs> yeah, and as we mentioned, um, this requires us to like um, specify what would be the maximum cores in memory. Uh, I would like to see what is the downside of specifying like too much. Does it uh, maybe have some resource allocations related or how we are going to be affected? So uh, meaning, uh, I can we enable I it by default and can we set the values too high? I think the good point to provide uh, user such opportunity uh, uh, I saw how is it implemented in different um, virtualization systems, especially Open Nebula. And every time when you want to have live resizing by resources, you have to specify maximum limit. So it should be uh, specified by user. I don't think that um, providing uh, some defaults is a good point here because some uh, operating systems might not support this. I just yes. heard that in some cases, yeah. uh, if you specify 264 cores uh, and only two of them are active and the windows will show you that all of them are available. <laughs> so I think yeah. we should provide the choose to our users and not to do any additional um, defaults. That is exactly the points which I'm looking for to appear on the proposal on how does it actually looks like for from the guest perspective or from the pot resource perspective. If it's going to allocate, for example, memory uh, for the structures, VCPU structures or not, and if we need to improve the memory overhead calculation for the pot to prevent uh, OM kills and, and such things. Yeah, I got it. Um... I think it should be done from the Kubernetes side, but I haven't checked uh, this um, this PR which get merged. Uh, I haven't checked how exactly is it working. Will it do reschedule or will it refuse just to increase amount of resources if node has no such of them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would call it like, this is the infra part you are talking, so. Um, allowing us to use more things from the host. But then there is uh, the hypervisor, the Kimu, which will also allocate some resources for itself 
to then be able to uh, provide more resources to the guest. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for suggestions. Uh, if you can do that, please mention them in the proposal so I, they will not get lost. Sure. Thank you for bringing that even while you're uh, traveling there, Indri. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you're safe. All right. Um, let's see. We've got a PR dropped at. Looks like we need a. Mac user just to validate. Let me see. See you later, Andrew. Thank you. All right. I am going to see about validating that doc. Change later today. Let's see, operator update strategy, mailing list item. Yeah, maybe I can summarize it pretty quickly. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so currently, we support um, basically two ways how to upgrade or downgrade uh, KubeBird. One way is that you keep the keep the operator in the same in the same version, and you just mod modify the KubeBird CR. Uh, you modify the parts with the images, and the operator will re reconcile and upgrade or downgrade based on what you want to do. Uh, so this is the first way, but the second way, which is preferred from our perspective, is to actually update or downgrade the operator as a first step, and then tell the Kubler to uh, use the old or new images, uh, and therefore perform the upgrade. Um, why it is important for us to discuss it is that we have some kind of logic which is not trivial. Uh, so we are able to handle the upgrades even with old or new uh, operator. And we would like to get rid of this because we found out that there is a bug here. Uh, it is not easily testable and we probably don't, don't need this. Uh, and we call this uh, strategy uh, basically that's the way how we do it internally right now, but we would right like to move to, how to say this, into plain reconciliation. So if somebody is using the upgrade path where you don't really touch the operator, just specify the images, we would like to know your use case and why you, why you are using it this way. All right, so um, sounds like a general call out for feedback. Um, anyone especially has opinions on the Kubert CR? Um, it looks like as a source of truth, then definitely jump in and uh, 
share affirming or question type feedback. And let's see, we have third time out error. Looks like request for troubleshooting help. Definitely worth jumping in and helping if you can. Let's see, and it looks like we have one bug to go with. Disk order is out of order. Oof. Do we have where is Maybe Alexander, can I help you? So I'm, I'm fairly certain there's no correlation between the uh, target name in Kimu uh, versus what's in the guest OS. So, because um, if your guest is, let's say, Windows, there's you know, there's no SDA or whatever. So mm -hmm. I don't think you can actually make the determination about which um, disk uh, has which name in the guest. Um, you should use like a serial number or something like that to positively identify the, the correct disk. I, I had the same issue when I was working on the hot plug, so. There. Something that shows that spec in here for like doing this area, like you mentioned. Sweet.
Uh, let me find the relevant KEMU documentation about this because it's it's pretty hard to find, and I'll I'll link it in the in the issue. That'd be great. Skip them close. And it looks like that covers everything that was dropped in here other than let me look. Um in Zoom chat, was there a question about dev setup or something and adding that to open for? Yes, here it is. All right, problem with test case. We've got a Slack conversation here. I not open that up in the browser, but I guess I could. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it looks like Cooper Dev has a Slack conversation from today about this. Uh, probably you are not sharing the Slack. No, I'm not. Um, yeah. But that link does work. That should be able to take you. the convo if you're able to contribute. Drop that in Zoom Slack as well for anyone who doesn't have the agenda pulled up. Um, the gist of it has to do with vert, seed, vert cuddle not touching repository version and returning empty stream. Interesting. Okay. All right then. With that, I cc'd myself on validating that doc. And otherwise, any last minute call outs, shout outs, fun facts? All right then, unless I missed anything, I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting going once. Going twice. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance and participation. As always, it's a privilege to get to lead these. We will see you same time, same place next week. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.